All right, guys, so today we're going to be working on a cat skid loader 247B2. Um, so this is a buddy of mine. He uh, was using it, and it just the hydraulics quit working on him, and then the battery, or the engine quit running. He uh, tried to jump start it, and it wouldn't start. Um, so I looked at it earlier today, and the uh, positive cable was loose, so we tightened that up. And we jump started it, and it started up, it was running, and uh, it would drive for about, I don't know, 30 seconds, and then it just quit moving. Um, it lost all hydraulic functions with the, with the levers. Um, and I'm thinking he ran out of uh, battery juice. So we're going to check this thing over, see what, uh, what we're getting for, uh, check to see if it's a bad battery, bad alternator, and we're gonna fix whatever's wrong. So, yeah. The first thing you want to do, you've got to open up the back. There's a little thing right here, and that's how you open it up. And that's how you get to the goods. So, got the battery right there. Uh, the alternator is right behind this shield right here. So, first thing first, I guess, we're going to get a multimeter, check the battery, see what we got for voltage, and then uh, we'll try to start it. All right, so we're going to set the multimeter to DC volts. And then black on positive, or black on positive, black on negative, right on positive, you can get to it. It's a little, kind of far back there. All right, that's on there. And what do we got for volts? 12, 12. We got 12.12 volts. We're gonna turn the key on and see what we get. So my lovely assistant is gonna go turn the key and just, uh, See what we get when we put it on accessor, the first click, which would be run. Turn the key on, and we're going to see what we get. Battery's dropping pretty quick. Try starting it once. Try starting it again. Alright, so right here we're going to be checking for voltage off the alternator. You want to check the, uh, usually it's a big red wire coming off the back of the alternator. Um, this is your the voltage you want to actually check because if you check it just on the battery, it could read low on the battery, but that could just be from a bad connection somewhere. So you want to make sure that you actually check on the alternator to get the true reading of the uh, voltage output on your alternator, which in this case is 11.8, uh, not quite cutting the mustard. So as you can see, um, the voltage on here, while it was running, was 11.8 or whatever it should was. Should be 13 to 14 volts, something like that, which, it's a little low. So I'm thinking it's probably a bad alternator. All right, so we come to the conclusion the alternator is bad. So first thing we're gonna wanna do, actually first thing we wanna do before we even mess with any of this, probably disconnect the negative. So that way we don't forget about it later. Probably first thing you wanna do, so. Um, that right there, half inch, we'll take that off. All right, so back is spinning the back side of this thing. So all you got to do is put a screwdriver on the back side, kind of wedge it in between this part and the little square piece, and that'll keep it from spinning so you can loosen that. Oh, that's not working. Putting your uh, screwdriver in there will not work like previously seen. So sometimes you actually have to get the right tool. That loose, we should be able to get this uh, negative off. There we go. We'll just set that down there so that way it's not hooked up. That way we don't shock it. So 
Now, next course of business was we're going to uh, take off these right here so we get their shield off. So now we're going to take these off. It's a uh, 13 millimeter. Oh, and that one you can't get a socket on, so we're going to need to get a wrench for that. So get a wrench on there, break that loose. Check. There's two on top, there's 13, there's one on the bottom down here. Another one right there. I'm gonna just put the bolts back in their spot so I don't lose them because uh, I don't have one of those fancy dancy magnetic trays with me. And I don't know how well that would be just to leave them up there. It might fall. And... All right. So now we gotta get this belt off. And to get this belt off, the tension uh, by this belt is set by um, the alternator. So there's a bolt on the back side of the alternator here. And you just loosen that up. And this whole, you might need to loosen this one too. It depends on how tight this one is. But we might be able to just slide it all over once we loosen this. So that back there is a 12 millimeter. And we're going to bust that loose. So that's loose. Now let's see if we can move this alternator at all. Oh, she's still pretty stiff, so we're probably gonna have to loosen this up right there. So for this bolt here, there's a nut on the back side, and we're gonna have to hold the nut on the back side and turn this out, get that loose a little bit so we can. So we're gonna guess it's probably 13. 13, put it back there. up here. There we go. There we go. And there she moves. So now we get this belt off and out of the way. Then we can set this belt aside. And then we can get this alternator off. So when you're taking off this uh, bottom bolt right here, be careful on the back side. There's a bunch of washers, kind of like this front here. And you don't want to lose all your washers out the back. So just uh, one thing to note. Three on the back. There's three. three washers on the back, the plus the nut. So now we can uh, finish getting that bolt off the top here, that 12 millimeter that's on the back side right there. Get that bolt off the back for this top ear right here, 12 millimeter. So that's what we're working on. And be careful of the washers on that as well. So now, got that off. Now we should be able to just pretty much pull this out like that. Now this alternator is loose. It's kind of sandwiched in on this part right here, but we should be able to get it off pretty easily. So now we just gotta pull it off gently. So we can get to our connections on the back side. We got some maybe uh, 10 millimeter, eight millimeter, I don't know, some really tiny ones. I was going to try getting this with a wrench, but I don't think that's going to be possible. We're going to need a socket to get in here, so that's a kibosh to that idea. We're just going to see what size. Okay, so the the wire that comes in for uh, the alternator, the big wire here. Um, Main positive. Yeah, that's the one that goes to the battery uh, to charge the battery. That's what that goes. That is a 10 millimeter. So we can bust those other two smaller wires loose. This one here and that one there. And we should probably make note, the yellow one 
is right next to the red. So it goes red, yellow, green. Kind of like stoplight. Yep, just like a stoplight. Hot damn, didn't even think of that one. There we go. Alternator is out. And actually, feeling it spin right now, you can actually feel it's kind of dragging a little bit. And you can kind of hear it in this uh, alternator. But now we got to wait for the alternator to come in. Once the alternator comes in, then we can. Uh, put the new one on and see if that uh, takes care of our issue but I'm pretty confident that's what's wrong you take your uh, old alternator and if you have to get a core um, on it make sure you take your pulley off because a lot of times they do not come with the pulley um, which I already did kind of forgot to take a video of that but got my new alternator got the pulley on and uh, now it's time to get it installed back into the skid steer. First thing you're going to want to do before you even want to put that all in there, is you want to take your uh, your nuts off your pegs back here and that's what uh, that way when you get it in that area you can hook your wires back up because it's a lot easier to hook them up with it facing this way than the opposite way. All right, so when you're hooking this back up, um, just so you know where the wires go, the red one, which is the bigger eyelet of the three, goes on the bigger post, obviously. But the yellow and the green one can be kind of tricky because they're both the same size. Um, but what I noticed is it's kind of like a stoplight. You have red, yellow, and green. So that's how that goes. And I got my eyelets on, now I just gotta get my nuts on, tighten them up, and then I can uh, get this installed back on the brackets. After you get your, your connections hooked up, now it's time to get the alternator back on its bracket. So first part you're going to want to do is put that long pin bolt that goes through the bottom here. You want to put that through first and that way you can swing this up to get your belt on because you want to set your belt tension when you tighten that top one. So that's the first thing we're going to do. Get this sitting correctly and then put our bolt in. Alright, so once you get that bolt tight right there, then you're going to want to get your belt put back on and then get that done quick so that's all done so now all we got to do pretty much is put this bolt in right up here on that Get that tightened up, get that tightened up, put our shield back on, battery cable, and this thing's done. Alright, so we got it in. We're going to see if it can start. Once it starts, we need to check the voltage coming out to see if it uh, has enough, if it's putting out what it should be. 